Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you're in or whenever you're watching this thing. This is the Wix online meeting number 18. As Bob rightly pointed out before the meeting, this is the day before Valentine's Day, uh, if that means something to you. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that aren't able to be here in person. And we'll get this road on the show. Here we go. Not a whole lot to talk about today, um, unless we end up bringing a whole bunch of things up in the questions, comments, like we did last week about um, GitHub, I guess is what we were talking about last time. So uh, let's go do triage. And if you have questions or comments, things you want to discuss, toss them in the uh, comment area, and we will bring them up as we go along. Otherwise, Bob, you ready? I am set to go. All right. Eight bugs. Mm. Couple snuck in this morning. Couple snuck in this morning. I guess. Yep. And see, once again, I've lost. It, it's it's fine until. Yeah. Whatever. I will be using my keyboard again. This is an old bug. Um, yeah. Someone added a comment and sent it back to triage. This was closed as won't fix. It's a legitimate issue. Telling them to rework their administrative permissions isn't really an acceptable solution. Oh, um, let's see. All right, rem removed and the person that set originally existed. All right, so then, fine. We could. Um, I, I guess we can toss this in the bucket of we have to figure out how to differentiate yeah. um, upgrade from repair. I guess that's what this is about. Right. And we just, I don't know what we do there. Um, but yeah, that's, eh. I wonder if we should create a feature that is solve this and then link all these bugs to it. Solve this very large and yeah. <laughs> unknown monstrosity of a problem in MSI and then see if it, and then, then, and in doing so, you would then be able to go fix this bug, this bug, this bug, this bug, this bug, this bug. I think that's probably the best thing we can do. Well, yeah, it might point out the the largeness of the issue. Yeah, I I think let's let, let's do that because we're we're having a hard time. Honestly, we're having a hard time tracking all these bugs, and I think yeah. that'll help. So, do you mind taking that feature request opening thing, and we'll go from there? Can do. All right. Let's see, shift tab, going backwards. Bundle package should handle detect condition. Another addition. Burn, disable, system restore, and MSIs, but it doesn't on its bundles. It would be nice main bundle, disable, system restore, and sub bundles as well. I could see that. Yeah, that's. Uh, I guess this didn't need to be untriaged to add that comment, but that's okay. Um, well, yeah. it gave us the power to, you know, say no. I guess hammer it with a big with, a, and... with another big comment right below it. But right, <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be nice to have that feature done. But anyway, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not getting to my blog entry right now. That one's just got to hang out. No right to left language support. Really? Um. Uh... I think yeah. you can do it. It's just really hard. Can you not set the bits to make it right to left and have it work? Um, actually, that's true. You should be able to set all the mirroring bits. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a pain because you have to use the style hex codes, probably. Um, well, let's take this as a feature. This is not a bug. Let's open it as a feature. And we could say, yeah, we could make... You should be able to do this with style bits, and we could do something to make it easier to do theming with right to left. That works. I'm, I think that would be a totally reasonable thing to add. Man, this is actually fairly keyboard friendly. I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> hey, it's not every day that a web page is keyboard friendly. Um, uh, sadly true. All right. Using tag extension can break package generation using purely Wix method. Mm. That one I wasn't, I wasn't clear on. Well, if if your uh, PDB ends up with the path embedded in it to the temp file that gets created, you would have this problem. You know, this is my issue with purely uh, Wix patching as it's described. It's, it, it requires you to put all your source code in a new directory and keep your old directory around 
and all that other kind of stuff, it's just, oh, this just comes down to, it's not the right way for patching to work. We need to fix patching more fundamentally, I think. Well, and, I mean, it, it actually works fine. The problem is it was built with the assumption that, <clears throat> excuse me, you'd have, well, people like me around to write tools that, you know, that make it work. Yeah. You know? it's, it's, and you have to use extensive use of bind paths and things like that, which, I mean, bind paths in general are a good thing. But yeah, exactly. But it doesn't talk about doing that in that documentation anyway. Um, fundamentally, I don't think it's the right way to solve the problem. I think the right way to solve this problem is to be able to source from the original MSI and then it will solve all this. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that the tagging, the tagging is kind of super edge pushing the boundaries of what you can do in an extension. So, um, yeah, I'm sure this bug exists. I'm not sure we can fix it in 3x given all the limitations. Yeah. I and honestly, so. I don't think the fix is in the tag extension. I think the fix is in the um, way patching is handled. Yeah. This is actually a problem for any generated file. So, like, stuff that comes from merge modules, I bet, has similar problems and things like that. <laughs> yes. Uh, Which is yeah. why, why you have melting them and stuff like that. So Right, right. Um, yeah, I think this is, you know, use the, the other part of melt to trick, right? Because that'll work. Because it will then update your PDB, point to the melted MSI and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I think this is just, this, uh, this convinces me that further, <laughs> as if I needed further convincing that we need to do something to our patching system. Um, I don't know how we're going to fix this in 3x, though. Yeah, I I agree. I th I think. Well, from what I know of the patch, the um, tag extension, it's not going to be fixable. Um, interesting. Well, is this another case of? We should close this bug and open a new feature request. Yeah, I, I think this. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It kind of gets tied in with all the the other generation things. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just need to. We just need to read. And honestly, this is a four thing. I don't know how we do this in three X. I think this. I think the solution here is we close this bug and we basically point them at the solution that uh, of using melt. Yeah, yeah. And basically, go, yeah. To do this, you need to do that. Maybe this bug is that we should update the documentation or the purely Wix method to change it to talk about using melt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah? Yeah, okay. That works. Right. Let's do that. That'll buy us time in 3x. That basically says, now that you've gone all through these instructions, note how you had to have different directories. If you don't maintain different directories, you know, and maybe explain, you know, just got to explain how it's going to use the same files, and that's why your diffing doesn't work. And because I, mean, I remember reading that thing, going, "Oh, this is pretty cool," and then going, "Wait, they just pulled a little trick here. Like there are two different directories, and everything. And that's why this is working." And yeah, yeah. Don't do that. It doesn't work. And I saw people getting tripped. I was like, "Uh huh." So it might be good to toss in the whole melting thing at the end, going, "And if you didn't do this, and you only have your MSI, use this to get your." your, what is it, the target MSI laid out correctly in case you didn't maintain two different directories. Right. Well, and, and we have another feature request for Melt to not require exploding the MSI, so basically to just update the, the Wix PDB. Um, uh, so I think if we combine those things with, um, I, I'd kind of like to, to actually create a new tool since Melt has, you know, an older purpose, um, I think it's not terribly discoverable. Um, Maybe imp implement those two things and throw it into a new tool. Um, all right. I'm, I'm a little hesitant to add new tools, but yes. I mean, yes, if that's the right thing to do. Yep. 
I mean, if we have existing tools that can do the job, but yes. Well, yeah, I I, uh, I, I waffled on on putting this functionality into Melt. Okay. Since it's actually very, you know, it's like Melt your merge modules or update your works PDBs. Well, uh, it's melting your MSI, but yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, I know, I, I know. That's where I ended up, and all right, okay. I still look at it and go, mm, yeah. Sounds like a good thing to have a discussion about, so we can kind of decide. Yeah, sir. Because we always had big discussions about when we added new tools, and I think we kind of got tool happy for a while. Is what I'm a little hesitant about. We, we, I think we did. And I think we have. There's an opportunity to consolidate, maybe a little bit. Possibly. And then in Wix 4, we remove the necess necessity for doing such a thing, and we build it in all naturally, and it all just works like magic, because magic is awesome. Magic is awesome. All right, I think that's the solution to that. Agreed. Certificate registration may end up in duplication. <laughs> Sounds like relegation, but this isn't this isn't footy, so I don't know. Um, we are deploying our certificates IS extension as follows. Right, okay, so certificate... Everything works correctly when installed. Yeah, I don't like the way we do the friendly name thing, but whatever. Um, user manually installed the same certificate. Okay. And then you end up with two entries. Right. One friendly name and one without. Uninstalling leaves the manually one. Right. But they added it... Man Honestly, this is... You know, there are a lot of cases where we don't do this kind of thing, but this is a good thing, isn't it? You manually added something, and when you install, we add something, but it doesn't collide. <laughs> and then on uninstall, we remove the one we added. <laughs> isn't that a good thing? Like, otherwise we remove the one the user added? I don't know. Sorry, I'm just looking at the I am thread going on. I mean, there are so many there, cases where we can't do the right thing because there's only a single, you know, you can only have one reg key named foo, but here you can have multiple, you can have multiple instances of the certificate with the same thumbprint, and so we put ours in and removed ours, and they had their own, and it was great. We didn't screw well, theirs up. So, so, I mean, the final question in the, in the bug is, should this work on the thumbprint and, you know, dedupe based on that? Well, I, I could certainly, when we, when we, when I created this extension back in the year 2000, God, that sounds so bad. <laughs> hey, it was still this, oh, it wasn't technically this millennium. Damn, sorry. <laughs> anyway, when I did that work, there's a lot of questions about how to handle certificates. This would be, I guess we could have this as a feature and have it, you know, we could say, this is one of those, hey, yeah, we can add more configuration to the way it works, and you can then control it. Um, but we, this certainly is not a, <laughs> as both Sean and Jacob are pointing out, there are a lot of people that would want this behavior. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, functionality-wise, it's exactly correct. Um, do we put this in a suspended as a feature? Oh, got it. Yeah, absolutely a feature. Um, and and there that would that would go. Yep. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Candle cannot identify the out property. Oh my gosh! Really? That to me looks like it, <laughs> I call it the Outlook uh, hyphen rather than a dash, but it's an image, so I'm not a hundred percent certain. Yeah, no. <laughs> it works. I was just doing it the other day. <laughs> it thinks out. It, out is not a... I think you're right. It's probably an M dash. This, this will work just fine. As long as you get the dash out, not... Yeah. What is that? M dash out? I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to call it? Oh, yeah, this is not a bug. This works thing is that it looks like a source code, which means that the dash there is not being recognized as a dash. 
trying to create this when locally in VS, I undefined that. I spent three to fours. Can you help me out? Yeah, this is a go send email to Wix users. Right. That wasn't so bad. Earlier today, earlier today. So the last two issues I don't think are issues. Probably people copying out of Word documents. Um, and that should take us down to one bug, and that bug is dependent on me getting back to writing mode and that kind of stuff, which I am not, which I will be in, but not this week. Um, so on that note, I think we're good here, right? Yes. I am. I'm still catching up. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I just like seeing it. <laughs> so that leads us back to. Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry. Oh man, I'm so bad on my presentation things. The triage slide after we've done triage. Yay! Sorry. Um, questions, comments, things that people want to discuss. Um, a little birdie told me it's it's Eric's birthday. Is that true? Is he is he still here? He's not admitting to it. He's not admitting to it. <laughs> Yesterday. Oh, we uh, missed it by one day. Well, happy day after your birthday. Um, and because it's it was yesterday, you were spared listening to Bob and I run you know serenade you with um, happy birthday. Although oh I guess this is this is that is a bit of a problem, right? Because there's a copyright on happy birthday, and we probably don't have permissions to give that. So so anyway, we, you probably would have been saved. Um, so um, Jacob wants to ask something about GitHub, but I don't know what. Um, yeah, we wouldn't want to get sued. Yeah, outer curve would be out, you know, be dollars there. Well, but you know, it's an IP <laughs> issue, so I'm sure there's some expertise. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Probably not the kind of IP issue that they would have uh, planned on, but yeah. <laughs> that, that would be awesome. Wix be, is the first open source project for Microsoft successfully exists for in the open for uh, a decade. Never gets sued. Never gets Microsoft sued until they sing Happy Birthday. Yep. <laughs> of course, then we've been out of curve at that point. So, anyway, uh, Jacob, was there something specific about GitHub you wanted to ask? Current plan for GitHub. Um, there is no current plan yet, but that's mostly because the discussion was awesome, and people are kind of like, yeah, we should do GitHub sooner than later. So I, I think we're going to do GitHub sooner than later. Um, that leaves me, and that answer, honestly, I think surprised me a little bit. Um, I thought people would want to wait. I don't know why, but I guess I was expecting that, which means there's a couple other questions I want to ask about how we lay out GitHub. The biggest one being, do we continue to do the Wix repository with all of the version branches in it, or do we try to create separate repositories, one for Wix 3 and one for Wix 4? Um, and, and not take history. Is that the other and, bit? And not take history, yeah. Um, so, and Jacob's saying he never had problems with the, um, things. well, the problem is, as I understand, is that our line endings are all out of whack inside the, the Git repository, even before the Git attributes. And so the attempt was to add the Git attributes file to try to start sorting all that out. And now it's had problems. And I think the files that had higher traffic were, um, one way or the other, but our repositories was mishmashed all over the place. I wonder um, if there's an export tool that, that would help with this. I, if, if there was a tool that would just show me what's wrong, that would be awesome, but well, yeah. I just can't figure out where it's at. I can't, I, can't, I don't know. I, I spent so much time on this problem. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, Eric, yes, the problem is that all the line endings are not consistent, and as we've been trying to work through it, the line endings are, have not been stabilizing. The As I was someone that looked at the Git repository, like the dot, actual dot .git directory, found mismatches in there between files, and that was confusing things. So the attempt was to add a Git attributes to try to force it all one direction, and that wasn't working out, or that hasn't helped. It still has, we have, still have lots of problems. Um, throughout the repository. Yeah, I, I, I've done the whole 
uh, hard reset, delete all the local files, all that. I've done that step many times, and then it's actually kind of fun when you do that, and then you go to Wix 4, and you bring that commit over to Wix 4, and then you come back to Wix 3.9, then you'll find a whole bunch of other changes have changed inside um, uh, the um, Wix 3.9 branch. So it's like as you go back and forth, the white space gets all messed up, and it was never stabilizing. It was one of the big problems I was having. Anyway, so the idea was the Git moving to GitHub was a way of um, kind of just addressing that whole thing uh, by uh, starting a Git repo from scratch with the appropriate Git attributes from the beginning, which would then set the line endings inside the repo correctly, and everything would be clean after that. Plus, if you go back, all of the Mercurial migrations we've had, and actually there's a lot of theory that the Mercurial migration did some, a lot of this um, weirdnesses, that if you go back and look through our history, it's really crazy due to some of the way the Mercurial stuff comes in, which makes it, if you go back far enough, the, the history can get really challenging to, to operate with. Fortunately, we're far enough away from most of that that it's not too much of a problem anymore. But, man, I was having some real, <laughs> I was really testing my Git experience when I was, very new with it in the early days, trying to get all the branches to merge correctly. So, um, anyway, so the I have so coming back to the original question, the move to GitHub basically comes down to abandoning history. Just and it's not abandoning history; it's just like cutting it off. So if you want history before this point, you go to this repo. If you want history after this point, you go to this repo. Um, I'm even thinking about adding another repo in GitHub and calling it like <laughs> CVS used to call it the attic which is basically where yep. all your stuff yep. could be archived so we could bring the attic over which would basically be everything that's on CodePlex um, I'm not sure I'd bother doing that unless we were worried that CodePlex was going to go away um, but uh, and you know we want to maintain the history there but or we really wanted it in one place or something like that but so anyway next steps are and I'm not in a hurry to do these things I'm in a huge hurry to do these things but um in the next you know, few weeks, I'm thinking, um, we hopefully can uh, finish the discussions about the way we want this to get laid out in GitHub as best we can imagine, you know, that we want for the future, and then um, execute on that. And then we'll get to take advantage of the, the new hotness that is in GitHub that is lacking from CodePlex and go from there. Um, that said, it is very likely that because people are all for the GitHub move, I will probably be moving the Wix website first, which I think has the most benefit of being a separate repo and gets the most benefit from being able to edit files directly on GitHub, which is one of the more interesting features of the... so that people don't have to download the whole repo locally to make a change. They can just kind of edit some things online and it'll create a pull request for them and stuff like that. Um, which is really nice, especially since the website is usually, you know, I just need to add a couple words or <laughs> edit a couple things. Um, remove Rob's apostrophes from all the it's that he adds all over the places. Um, to, to be to be clear, that was Rob, not Bob. Bob, <laughs> Bob doesn't do that. No, no, no. Bob fixes it, or at least finds uh, it. And now in the future, it will be not so hard for him to just fix it. That's true. <laughs> anyway, so that's a lot of the thinking that will do there. So I think that will probably be the first move that we make. Um, does that answer the GitHub question for now? I've put everybody to sleep. Um, other than that, I don't know if there's anything else going on. It's pretty straightforward. Um, oh, the one thing is before the GitHub, the big thing is we also need to go through our pull requests and reconcile those because I expect it will be harder to pull them later. Um, when we're on GitHub, so we want to get kind of through all the pull requests that we can before moving over, because otherwise people have to do a migration. And there's a pull request in there that's really old that I wouldn't want to make that guy migrate to GitHub. That wouldn't be fair to him, simply because it took me a long time to decide whether we should take the change and stuff like that. So oh, that's actually yeah, that's interesting. They're I, completely unrelated repos. It should work. You should be able to cherry pick. Yeah, right? yeah. But but cherry picking has always been kind of I don't know. I've I've had bad experiences when I've attempted to do cherry picking that usually are, you know, totally pilot error, but I'm just like, oh, yeah, so, yeah. So I want to try to get through all those pull requests before we try to do the move just to make life a little easier. But yeah, yeah. if worst comes to worst, we can figure out how to do that too. That um, works. <laughs> so 
so that's all I that's all I got, I think. Um, anything else? Anything else out there? Nice, quick, short meeting, 30 minutes. I think that's probably what these meetings might get down to. Although it looks like we keep getting enough bugs to have something to discuss about. But did we actually get a bug? I guess we got the purely Wix bug. The other ones were we would like to mention that we would like these things to happen on these feature requests. Right. Or here's a mail I should have sent to Wix users instead of opening a bug for it. Yes. So I will now have my bug closed, spend everybody's time doing that, and then have to go send an email anyway. All right, cool. Uh, All right, so I think we're all good there. Um, oh, yeah, on that note, Jacob brings up a good point where he found a bug and a bug fix that had already been fixed and did not create a new bug for it. And honestly, I, my, my thinking is for the people that work on the Wix tool set regularly um, that are doing features and stuff like that, we don't always have to create a bug um, if you're just going to fix the issue right there, especially for something... You know, that's small. That you're say, I just found this. Let me just take care of this. Um, so, um, in those kind of situations, yeah, I mean, especially when you know we get to a place where more people have committed over time and they're getting faster. Like, I mean, at this point, both Jacob and Sean, who are on the call, have started committing enough that they might start getting the hang of it. That would be like, yeah, okay, these guys know what they're doing in these areas, so we can just look at it. We won't necessarily need a bug every time we do something. Um, for example, I have found a few bugs in the um, inline directory syntax parsing um, that I implemented, you know, at, a few weeks ago at, um, in the fire giant work that I was doing, and it's like found some parsing problems in there. So it's like, yeah, I need to go fix those. I'm not sure I'm going to bother opening bugs on them. I'll probably just send pull requests to fix them, um, and I'm fine with other people do that too. All right. But if it's an issue that you're not going to fix for a long time or you, you don't plan to fix opening a bug on it so somebody else knows about it, it's definitely a good idea. Yes. <laughs> I don't like losing bugs. That's always unfortunate. All right. So I think on that note, we're done. Uh, we'll call it a day unless you got anything else, Bob. Uh, no, I'm good. All right. So 3940, they're rolling. Get your features in. Get your stuff going. Do the... Uh, do the thing you do. Uh, we'll see you guys all um, next time. Talk to you later. Bye now.